signs, wonders, miracles. Join say, pending an Allen revival is like living again in Bible days. Miracles today with God's man of faith and power, A. A. Allen. Coming again now to bring the word of God to you is God's man of faith and power, Reverend A. A. Allen. Now, friend, there's one thing I believe tonight, and that's God's word. In just a few minutes tonight, and we're going to pray for those that are mentally ill, for our friends that have been brought in from mental institutions that are demon-oppressed and may be demon-possessed. One verse of scripture from Isaiah 58, the sixth verse. Listen. And God here is speaking to preachers. God is speaking to ministers. He's talking to you preachers. Is not this the fast which I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens? Number three. Let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Did God say that? Amen. To whom is he speaking? He's speaking to people that will fast and pray. Remember when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he said, This kind come about only through fasting and through prayer. And there's many kinds of sicknesses and diseases. That will never vanish and never disappear unless the minister or the believer that's going to minister to the sick and the suffering is going to fast and pray because with fasting comes power. There can be no genuine anointing or power of God unless you pray. Moses fasted and prayed 40 days. And when he came over the mount, his face was so shining with the glory of God, he had to put a veil on his face. Even the people couldn't even look at him because of the glory of God. Is that right? Amen. And you'll find that Jesus fasted and Jesus prayed. And all of his disciples that have ever had a successful ministry in healing the sick, fasted and they prayed and it was Christ himself that declared this kind come without only but fasting and the prayer. Here he is instructing his ministers and says I have ordained this. I have chosen it that you do four things if you will fast, if you will seek my face, if you will pray God said I'll give you power to do four things. What? Loose the bands of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free. In other words Free men and women that are oppressed. Now I want to tell you what oppression is. And tonight, possibly I may pray only for those that are oppressed. Listen, from Deuteronomy 28, the 28th verse, and I quote, The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Now this is the nervous disorders, the mental sickness. Uh, that uh, thousands of people are bound by today. And you'll be smitten with madness. And he mentions many other kind of, uh, of diseases and infirmities. Listen to the 20th verse. Thou shalt group of the noonday as the blind group of, group of in the darkness. Thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. That means no man is going to be able to help you until you meet the conditions that God has laid down in his book. When you meet the conditions laid down in God's book then and then only can someone help you. Did you know there comes a time when mental sickness and, and the nervous disorders, even the psychiatrist can't help you. My Bible says, and no man shall help thee and it goes on to say, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies, that's the devil, which the Lord shall send against thee, and so forth. And he describes, and listen to this, He, that is Satan, shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until thou be destroyed. And God said it's because of sin, self-will, and disobedience. But here God has commanded that every preacher, and that includes me, and tonight I claim this promise, that we break the bands of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed, which is a curse, 
Lift the curse. Let the oppressed go free. Now in the 10th chapter of Acts, the 38th verse, my Bible says, And I quote, God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing, listen, healing, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And some may say, Jesus is the only one who can do that. Then if he was, he was talking to himself. In Isaiah 58, 6. And if he is, but he wasn't, he's talking to me and you. He said that ye, he's talking to someone else, that you, that you break every yoke, that you undo the heavy burdens, and that you let the oppressed go free. Now a person who is oppressed today is in the same mental shape and the same mental condition they were 1900 years ago when Christ healed them. Is that right? So Webster tells us a person who is oppressed, that is oppression means to be burdened spiritually. To be burdened spiritually is a weight. Listen, do you feel that there's a weight on you or around and about you, whether it's in your mind or in your body, there's just a burden, an oppression, a depression that's burdening you down. Some of you go to church, you can't sing. You hear other people rejoicing and they're happy. They shout, they sing a song, some little housewives, Go about their work all day long as happy, cheerful, a big smile. Their face is shining, they're humming, they're singing, they're happy. They greet their husbands when they come home. They say, oh honey, I've had the best day. And my, they've got the best supper fixed for their husband. And some wives meet their husbands. They haven't even got the beds fixed. The dishes aren't washed. If he wants anything to eat, bless God, he can fix it himself or go to a cafe. Now, I know what I'm talking about. Why? All day long they've been mentally oppressed. They're sick. They're diseased. They're afflicted. They have no victory. No wonder some husbands, I don't say they should do it, but I say if he's a sinner, no wonder he stops at a bar before he goes home. No wonder he takes a case of beer home with him. No wonder he doesn't want to come home. And no wonder he stops at the pool hall and doesn't get into midnight. He don't want to come home and look at that... Uh, Amen. Every time he comes home, somebody meets him with a frown and with a grouch. He can't stand it. No wonder husbands are leaving their wives. No wonder wives are leaving their husbands. There's never been a time when there's so much divorce and remarriage. And somebody said, I just buried six times and I'm going to try it the next time. And the seven is a perfect number and maybe I'll get a perfect man after all. Listen, the next one you get may be ten times worse than the last one. I've never seen the time when so many homes are being broken up. And generally, it's because the companion is oppressed. Am I right? So a person who is oppressed is burdened down as with a weight. It means to be weighted down. It means to be crushed. It means to be burdened or trampled down by abuse and by authority. And husband, do you know that maybe your wife is mentally ill? Generally, they're the last ones to confess it many times even to know it. But they're burdened down and trampled down by abuse or by authority. They're crushed, they're burdened, and they're trampled down by some kind of a foul force. Mentally, they're not right. But this is what God has called every preacher to do. And do you know that psychiatrists today are sending many of their patients back to their ministers and saying, why, my friend, this is not a case for the doctor. This is not a case for the psychiatrist. Why, this is a case for the church. This is a case for your minister. This is a case for your preacher. And many psychiatrists today are saying, why, your sickness, your oppression, your depression has a direct connection with the devil, has a direct connection with some kind of a spirit that isn't right. This is a case for your preacher. Go to your church. Many of them are saying, well, I went to the preacher, but he sent me to you. But many psychiatrists today are sending their people back to the church saying, this is what God told his preachers to do, and he didn't tell the psychiatrists to do it. This has something to do with evil spirits and demon spirits, and it's a job for the preacher. God told me it was my job. And tonight, in the name of Jesus, according to his word and his great commission, we're praying for those that are mentally sick, for those that are oppressed, who are trampled down, that are burdened, that are troubled, that are distressed. Hear me.
God called me to do it, and as sure as God called me to do it, he's going to stand by my side while I do what God told me to do. How many believe God will do it? Do you believe it? Brother Bob, on the second row here, there's a little colored lady on the very first seat next to the aisle. God said, what? I've ordained this. I have chosen it. That you loose the bands of wickedness. That you undo the heavy burdens. That you let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. Do you see what's happening? He can't get down here with her. She is demon possessed. Somebody help her. Somebody said, is that play acting? No, this is real. This woman is demon possessed. Everybody here, put your hands on your Bible. Can't get her up at all, can you? Now this is the way demons work. Leave me alone, Cordell. Leave me alone. Be what? Go on down home and leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. That is not this woman. That is a demon. Leave me alone. You are my husband. Leave me alone. You are a demon. Leave me alone and leave my children free. I am in the church and I don't want you. Leave us free. Let you go free? Let us go free. Let us go free. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> now this woman came to me this afternoon with a private interview card. I talked with her a long time. She stood here with tears running down her face, wringing her hands. When I called her down here, that wasn't a gift of discernment. I knew she had a, a special card. She's got to have special help. She told me she was demon-possessed. She said she, there's a big barrel of snakes that torment her. They always seem to be in a big basket somewhere close to her. They strike out at her and they talk to her. She said there's one that's eating her face off. She said, look at my face. You see a close-up of it? Look at the scars on her face. Do you see all these scars and sores on her face? Look at these scars and sores on this woman's face. She said, one is biting me on the face all the time. Look at these sores. See these huge scores all over her sores on her face? This woman is demon-possessed, and the thing you hear talking is not the woman. As the scripture says, in the fifth chapter of Luke, or Mark, at times it taketh him. See if you can get her on her feet. Look here now. Well, devil. Devil. You're going to let this woman go. Aren't you? Am I? Yes, you are. You've had her as long as you can have her. <laughs> I said you're going to let her go. You've tormented her as long as you can torment her. I see you. You're going to let her go. And she's going to be free and you're going to torment her no longer. Aren't you? Aren't you? You devil. You tormenting devil of insanity. You devil of oppression. I'm going in someone else. You're going to do what? I'm going in someone else. You're going to go in someone else? Yes. 
You want to go in someone else. They didn't put their offering in. I see. You're going to go in someone that didn't put their offering in. Yes. Listen to this. It knows it's got to go. It knows it must come out. Because no demon can stand before a man of God who has the power of God in his life. And I say this humbly because it happens to me, not me now. This is a demon talking. Everybody here that's got a Bible, put your hand on your Bible. If you haven't got a Bible, reach over and put your hand on someone else's Bible. Do you hear this? You say, is there anything biblical about this? The 12th chapter of Matthew said, When an unclean spirit cometh out of a man or a woman, it walketh through dry places seeking rest, it findeth none. In the book of Luke, remember what happened in the 8th chapter? One man had a legion of them. And when they came out, they went into swine. And 2,000 swine ran violently down into a steep place and were choked to death in the sea. This goes to prove that when demon spirits enter into animals, the first thing the animal tries to do is to destroy itself. So de the one objective of demon spirits is to destroy the mind mentally. Insane demons. The body physically. Infirm spirits. Luke 13 said, And there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity and was bowed together 18 years and could no wise lift herself up. But when Jesus came, do you know what he did? He cast a demon out of her. said, Come out of her, thou unclean spirit. And he said further in the same chapter, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed, whom Satan had bound low these 18 years, be loosed on the Sabbath? And the Bible said she was a daughter of Abraham, which could mean even a woman of a certain type of faith. But yet the devil had her bound physically. And you're going in someone else? Yes. No, you're not. Not under this tent. But you're coming out. Yes. You're coming out. In the name of Jesus, I command you to say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. And I'm going to let her go. And I'm going to let her go. I can't stay. I can't stay. God said, I give you authority. He said, I give you power and authority over demons. They came back. Why, they said, Lord, even devils are subject unto us through thy name. Jesus said, Rejoice not! The devils are subject unto thee, but rather that thy name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, hallelujah. Friend, if you're here tonight under this tent and you're not a Christian, but I've already made this altar call. If you're not a Christian, you'd better bow your head where you are. If there's sin in your heart, you'd better bow your head and say, Oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Why, this thing's coming out of this one. And if you're a sinner and there's sin in your life, there's an open door and there is an invitation for this vile demon to enter into you. And I feel over in this section, I feel many sinners. You didn't answer that altar call. I feel you over there. This thing's coming out of this woman. And if you're not careful, can enter into you. Oh God, put your hand up, everybody, if you don't want this thing to get in you. God, tonight I claim authority over this thing. It's got to go to the pit. It's going to walk through dry places. It's going to go to the pit. In Jesus' name. Yes, God. Satan, you're coming out. She's going to go back to her husband. And she's going to be a good wife. And she's going to love her husband. And her husband's going to love her. And she's going to have a happy home. And you're going to lose her and come out. You've tormented her as long as you can torment her. You know you're whipped and you know you're defeated. You know you can't stay. I claim power and authority.
authority over you. You're going back to the pit where you belong. Aren't you? Aren't you? Yes, I'm going. You're going? Yes. When are you going? I have no more room in here. You this have what? See, I got too much room for God. I have no more room in here. There's no more room for you. Are you listening? Put your hands up, everybody. This is an unusual case. But demons know they are defeated. Oh, friend of mine, if anything in the world is real, it's this. You ought to put up both hands and shout. Shout in the God with a voice of triumph. Everybody put your hand on your Bible. David, I want you to come and pray. Oh, the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. Tommy, I want you to come and sing it. Just sing it softly. Oh, the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. While we pray. If you cover with the blood tonight, you're safe. But if you're not covered with the blood of Jesus, you're not safe. Oh, everybody pray. It's gone. Everybody stand and let's rejoice together. Thank you, Jesus. She's happy. There she goes shouting. There she goes rejoicing. Bring me the girl back. I want to see how happy she is. All the rest of you, let's sing it together. Oh, the blood of Jesus that washes white. It's snow. All the blood of Jesus. Oh, you're happy now. Brother Ed, I want to tell you something. My mother has seen the stream already. My mother trained me. She didn't tell me a lie. My brother-in-law, Brother Lawrence L. Campbell here, is doing the same thing. Now, but, but God set you free. Yes, I know He set me free. But these things have been tormenting you. Yes, they have. You've been seeing them. Yes. They've been biting your face. Yes. But you're God. They're gone now. Yes. You're free. Yes. You believe God's going to bless you? And you're I free. believe it. All right, run on down there. That wash. to heaven before you be seated. Let's thank and praise the Lord for what he's doing. Find a seat now and let me talk right into your heart. If you do not believe that demons are real today, write for this great book. It is titled, Demon Possession Today, How to Be Free. I'll send it to you on request. If in your letter to us you let us know you're standing behind this great ministry. We're just in close an offering for the support of our television time to help us take care of the printing, the secretarial help, and the mailing. If you're mentally sick, ask for this book, The Curse of Madness, proving that America is headed toward the insane 
asylum. If you're just sick physically and need healing, ask for my book, God Will Heal You. And listen, I want to come out into your home in a new way. I can't do it now, I'm only on your TV screen. But in the days of the Apostle Paul, I quote, it's found in the 19th chapter of Acts, the 11th and 12th verse, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. Here it is. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs, possibly not just like these, but larger ones. We call these miniature handkerchiefs. And what happened? They took them from his hands, they laid them on the bodies of their loved ones, sick and diseased, or that had evil spirits. And the Bible said they were healed, and the evil spirits went out of them. It is Bible and scriptural to believe that I can lay my hands on these, that this is God's method of bringing a portion of this big campaign into your own home. And I can lay my hands on this, and this is God's method of coming to you when you can't come here. This is God's method of bringing deliverance and healing into your home when you can't get into a meeting like this. God used this method in Bible days, and God is using it today. Thousands of people day after day write me and say, Brother Allen, I got the little prayer cloth or the miracle miniature handkerchief. I laid it on my son who was mentally retarded or my grandmother was blind or something and marvelous things are happening. God is healing them and evil spirits are coming out of them. Many of you have a boy or a girl that's mentally retarded. Some of you have loved ones in a mental institution. Some of you have got nervous disorders and a nervous breakdown. Many of you are mentally ill. Listen, this one is for you. And I'm going to send thee a one to you if you'll write me. But first, while we feel the power of God here tonight, and you know it must be here, or even devils wouldn't tremble and shake and confess they're defeated. Is that right? Everybody pray with me. Now God, as we lay our hands upon these bits of cloth in the name of Jesus, just as they did in Bible days, let each one, O oh God, bring healing to a multitude that will accept them in faith, in Jesus' name I ask for the glory of God. And all the people said, Amen. Write me, there's no charge. But remember, this is a ministry of faith. We can only come into your home, bring healing, bring deliverance, and even cast the devils out of you or your loved ones. Loose you and liberate you as you and faith stand behind this great work. Friend, listen. This ministry was not popular in the time of Christ. It's not popular today, but it's God's work. It's God's ministry, and as we leave your channel today, I want to remind you, we need your letter. You need our help. We need your offering. You need our faith and our prayers. Write me today. Ask for the literature which I have offered on this broadcast, and enclose your gift of love for the support of this great work. God's blessed you and God's prospered you. And as you bless us, we can bless you again next Sunday by putting this big tent up right in your living room and bringing God's word to you again with the deliverance that only comes with Bible preaching. Our mailing address is A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona. I'll repeat that. Miracle Valley, Arizona. Until next Sunday, we'll be praying for you. Until then, God bless you. Address your letters and prayer request to A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona. And remember, this telecast is supported with your faithful prayers and generous letters. Write today, A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona.